Welcome to this video which looks at finding the top use of bandwidth on your network. My name is Dara Delaney, I'm Head of Technical Services here at Netfort.com. So let's take a look at what's required to find out who are the top users of bandwidth on your network. So let's start off by just giving you an example. So I've got a network here, it's got two core switches. So these are interlinked for resilience, so I have core 1 and core 2. Coming off my core, I've got an access layer made up of a number of switches. And this may also include wireless access points. So I've got PCs, laptops, wireless access points, lots of things hanging off my access switches. Also hanging off directly off the core is my servers. So they're running a range of different services from file shares, web, proxy, but more servers, all directly connected, and also services like Active Directory, or file, maybe database servers. So they're all hanging off the core of the network. I then have one router here, connecting me out into a cloud where other WAN sites are connected. And I may also have here a router or firewall actually, connect me to the internet. So how do I find out on this network who are the top users of bandwidth? Well, it's fairly straightforward. First thing I need to do is install, download and install the Netfort Langardian software. So you can download that from www.netfort.com and you can get a fully featured free trial for 30 days. What you need to do is connect the Langardian back to both of the core switches. So just a regular network cable. Most people choose to use copper or Ethernet cables, though you can use fiber as well. The LAN Guardian in this case needs three network interfaces. It needs one for each connection to the core, and it also needs a management interface. So you can plug that out anywhere. In this case, I plug it in here to core two. So how can this find out who are the top users of bandwidth? Well, if I take a user who's connected over here, on their PC, so they go through the access layer, maybe access some databases, traffic pass through core one, maybe you've got a user down here, logged on to their PC, they're going to some web server here, so again, they're passing through the core to get to that service. And I've got a user here who, who's then going through the access layer, down through the core, maybe via the proxy here, and out onto the web. So all of these transactions, all of these connections and communications have to go through the core of the network. So this is the place you need to be if you want to find out who are the top users of bandwidth. Another good example as well is I've got a user out here of one of our WAN sites. And they've decided for some reason to copy a whole bunch of files from the file server here. It goes through the core of the network, out onto where the router is plugged in, out to the WAN and onto that user's PC. So again, this WAN activity is, is picked up here at the core. So once you've installed the LangGuardian software, you've got your two connections, the next thing you need to do is set up a SPAN or mirror port. In my case here, I've got Cisco switches, so it's very straightforward at this. I just need to identify what VLANs my servers are in. So you don't need to monitor every VLAN, you just need to monitor server VLANs. Because again, these transactions from users come in from the WAN or from access layer from user VLANs, pass through the core and out onto the VLAN. So in my case here, this is all in VLAN 1. So all my servers the same VLAN. Though if you have multiple VLANs with servers, that's fine. You just need to specify that when you set up monitoring. The last thing we'll to mention here is monitoring traffic via VLAN doesn't automatically give you usernames. The traffic gives you IP addresses, MAC addresses. So LangGuardian also comes with an Active Directory plugin, which allows you to capture usernames from AD. So it connects to the AD server and grabs usernames so that when you run a report, you can then see who are the top users of bandwidth on your network. So let's take a look at how a spanning session or report mirroring is set up on a Cisco switch. So you've installed the LangGuardian and you've connected the server to each of your core switches. So the next thing you need to do is set up a spanning session on each of your core switches. 
So I'm logged on to a, my Cisco switch here. If you don't have a Cisco switch, if you Google the name, make a model of your switch and either span port or mirror port, you'll get guides on how to set up your switch so that it can copy or monitor traffic. So I'm logged on to my Cisco switch. First thing I want to do here is run the command show VLAN. And I'm looking out for here, what VLAN number do my servers is associated with my server? So in my case, it's VLAN 1. You just need to write down any VLANs in your case that's associated with your servers. So the next thing I want to do now is go into enable mode. And I'm just actually going to run the command as well, show monitor. Um, so I don't have actually span configurations here at the moment, and that's fine. If you do have a span session set up, just take note of the number. There's, you're allowed two span sessions on a Cisco switch. So let's go into configuration mode now. So on this switch, I've connected the LAN Guardian to switch interface number six. So we do monitor session one, source VLAN one. If you've multiple VLANs, you just you put in one, then space comma two and five, whatever the, whatever the list is. So I've just got one in mine. Now on this particular switch I'm using, I have to specify RX for your switch. And um, there's only one or two switches you have to specify RX. You don't need to specify it at the end. So the second part of the command is to do monitor session one destination interface and I plug mine into interface number six on the switch and that's done. So I didn't log on to core two and I do the exact same thing. So I check my VLANs, check the monitoring sessions, set up a monitoring session and just make sure you specify the port where you've plugged in the LAN Guardian. So now let's log on to LAN Guardian and show what are the top users of bandwidth on my network. So I'm now logged on to the Network LAN Guardian. So let's find out who are the top users of bandwidth on this network. So I'm going to go to the left-hand menu here. It's going to go to bandwidth, IP, and simply just run top users. You can select whatever time period you want. I'm just going to look at the last 24 hours, run the report. You get a list of usernames, sent received, and total traffic. And we can start to drill down. So Windy here in sales department generates 3.24 gigabytes of data. Now you can start drilling on a lot of iTunes, proxy traffic. Let's drill down the web traffic here. So you can keep drilling down to get the details. So you should be on Microsoft, Pirate Bay, and a number of sites. So if you do find some something like this, something suspicious, somebody on Pirate Bay, you can also go to the home page and take a closer look at what's been happening here to be in. So Windy Fagan. Not only can we can go back to look at the traffic report for this user, but we can drill down and take a look at web activity. So for example, on uhi.com, drill down and find out what pages they've been accessing some, some, some sort of proxy system here on the uhi.com website. So a number of options exist here. You can do top users, top clients, top servers, even top talkers. So just get your LAN Guardian installed, connect it to the core of your network, and you can get reports like this on your network. If you want to find out who are the top users of bandwidth on your network, please go to our website, www.netfort.com, where you can download a free trial today.